What's up there workforce, Chris here with work to game and I wanted to talk a little bit about how to make that first million gil, that first two million gil, to get over that hurdle, especially if you have no crafters or gatherers leveled. That is something very difficult for new players to do or players who have already finished all their story, and so this is really geared at anybody who's finished ARR or forward that's running tight on money for some reason. Um, you guys have watched me on stream recently, I've blown through a ridiculous amount of cash, and anytime I want something I do. Now I don't let it pile up like the big Omni crafters do uh, and there are plenty of players richer than me but as far as getting started and getting that first couple million the lowest effort method is going to be what I'm about to show you and it is entirely based on two simple simple concepts the first is that you have your two retainers unlocked. I recommend sending them out on ventures. This is a great way to get some starting cash, but you can also make cash off of running leaves, running dungeons. If you do run on dungeons, roll on all the loot and go to your grand company and turn those in for venture coins. That way you can send them out on more ventures. And so once you have two of these unlocked, to get more than two, you have to add to the cost of your subscription over on the lodestone. So I pay for an additional two each month. And the second thing is going to be based right here in the tooltips. So if we go ahead and just kind of mouse over some various things, um, we'll find one eventually that has, there we go, shop selling price, birch sap, 468, and it says restricted, which means there's a limitation on it. But if instead we mark it to the one right here to the left of it, hard silver hatchet, shop selling price, 17,487. That's right above the vendor price for 263. That is going to be the other step you need. Now on your market board, I can 100% promise that for the sake of convenience or laziness, they don't want to go out to gamerescape.com to find out where the vendors are that, that sell it for this price and they definitely don't want to go to those vendors and pick it up themselves so they will pay you some amount more than this and so the question is what vendors have items that sell on your market board for more than the price that they sell from the vendor and how close can they be to the market board now the easiest place would be if you have access to a house this is my free company house so if you have if you haven't joined a free company one of the benefits of joining them is that they have a house and I'm showing you real load screen times because this is exactly how long it takes me to do this it, it's it's little to no effort whatsoever so we're gonna run in here I have the longer load screens than anybody else I play with and we're going to run downstairs now you'll see that I have stuff selling right now um, just some little stuff I'm getting rid of but actually where I get a lot of the stuff to sell if I'm not making stuff or I'm not gathering stuff because you do not need that to make money in this game is I go down here and I just had iron ore sell right before I started shooting this video so we'll take some iron ore and we'll we'll buy it keep in mind that's 1700 for a stack now a lot of these stacks if we look at stacks of 99 that's 200 gil 200 gil under 2000 under 600 under and honestly the vast majority of them are 7,000 gil or less. So if you have 7,000 gil, you can buy a stack of literally anything on this vendor, and you can see that if even if I jump it up to full stacks of 99, there, there really isn't here. Now, not all of this stuff can I make a profit on. On my server, for example, the raw sunstone, danburite, malachite, sphene, fluorite, lapis lazuli, none of those make me a profit, and they all cost me almost the max amount I can spend on a stack. But I have multiple tabs here, okay? So, and we'll go over if you don't have access to a house in a second. And so another thing that I know sells a lot is mineral water. Um, I know that, you know, uh, cinnamon actually sells a lot. Uh, so if I go down here, um, chicken eggs seem to sell for really well. So that's 500 gil for the stack. And if we jump down to cinnamon, um, we'll buy that for 400 gil for the stack. And uh, I know rye sells on my server, 400 gil for the stack, great. And then there's one more right in between, uh, the reagents. And I know that a lot of times what people buy is they'll buy rubber. So we'll buy for one from this tab and we'll just show you kind of how this works. So if I remember correctly for the last 10 seconds, none of those things were more than 1400 for the stack. So let's just assume 1400 for all of them, even though we know that some of those were less than 1400. Now, if you're counting the seconds here, this is literally maybe a 10 second load screen. That's five seconds of running, maybe five seconds of shop time. I mean, you were talking about something substantially less than one minute of your life if you know this is what I need to go buy and you go buy it right away and I'll show you kind of how you know what what sold and all of that here in just a second so we've got our 10 second load screen whatever yours is and we run back out to the nearest summoning bell and the key is how close can you get a vendor 
to the summoning bell for an item that you can make a profit you're okay with. So we jump on here and let's go target my retainer that has the least items listed. That seems fair enough. And we can sell items in my inventory. And look, we have these fresh stacks of 99 and we put up for sale. And as long as this thing goes for more than 1500, we're good. So we can see that typically people buy more than seven of this at a time. So really we could ignore that stack if it was priced at like 50 or 40 or something like that. So 70 is the number to beat, but just for thoroughness, let's go ahead and do 68. Okay. Now that iron ore is going to net us 6,700 gil, 6,700 gil. Even if all of these were 1400, that'd be, it would almost cover literally everything we just bought. Okay, now we jump into chicken egg and now we're talking about profit. Chicken eggs are going for 90 and if you're ever sure is this price really real, you can open up the history tab and you can see actually it's gone for well above 90 recently. Um, but we can't undercut 90 because that guy probably bought it from the vendor. So let's go ahead and do 85 and we'll just help kind of drive this market into the ground. And then we'll jump to cinnamon. And, oh wow, 230 for four, 235 for four, 240 for 99. Don't worry about high quality because four isn't gonna satisfy somebody. So 240 is the number to beat, but you can see in the history tab, it doesn't usually go for that. So we're gonna go ahead and drop it down to like, let's say 110, that's higher than most of what it's gone for, but much lower than the current market. So we'll look like a good deal relative. And then we'll jump to rubber and we'll talk about rubber. And uh, 245 looks like the going rate, looks like 200s is pretty fair. So we'll go ahead and drop it down to maybe 230 for a slight undercut. Um, don't wanna go more than about 10% if you don't have to. Uh, you're just crashing your own market. We talk about rye here, 300, 300. Looks like it does go for 300, but only to individual quantities. We see it going for the 100 in these larger quantities. So it does look like we need to undercut that a little bit more or it's not gonna sell. So we'll go down to 250 and there we go. Now, those ones that are like 250 and things like that, that's gonna make us 25,000 gil. So you can see how just off those four items, you could easily make 100,000 gil. And it may take you all week to sell those four, but that's 100,000 gil in a week for one minute of effort. And you can do that times 10, because you can have 40 items listed. So if you have 40 items listed and they're all gonna net you roughly, you know, 10 to 25,000 a piece, if you really hand pick what you sell out of the vendor, then you could very easily be talking about millions of gil a week for minutes of your life, especially if you're checking in with your retainer throughout the week and replacing it as it sells. Now, when you log back in and you check your retainers and you see that their number of items listed has dropped below 20, sometimes you're like, oh no, something sold and I wanna replace that thing because obviously the market likes that price. Well, you can click on view sale history here and you can see, look, we've already sold iron ore at this price today. Okay, we sold cotton yarn, that's another vendor item. We sold hard leather, these are things we've sold. Straw, that's a vendor item. Grass viper, that's a vendor item. Copper ore, that's a vendor item. There's more iron ore. And then I'm doing that times four retainers. So if I jump to any of my other retainers, I can promise that anytime I don't have enough items of my own to sell, I'm filling out the rest of their slots with this method, no matter how much money I have, because you might as well have all 20 items listed. So if I go to view sale history on a different retainer here, you can see cotton bowls, vendor item, cinnamon, vendor item, chicken egg, vendor item, uh, rye, rubber, more cotton bowls, uh, chicken breast, beeswax, rye, clove oil, mineral water. These are all vendor items. And you can see sometimes they're selling for 37,000 a stack, 9,000 a stack, 9,000 a stack, 11,000. I, I know these are just numbers, but like you saw none of the things from that vendor were priced above seven. So that's 30,000 profit plus two plus two. Okay, we're already over 40,000. Then we talk about, you know, another 9,000 profit. You're quickly getting to that 100,000 gill point. And so then you go to withdraw gill and you, you can see, okay, I just got 20,000 since last night when I cleared this out. And 20,000 gill isn't much, but people wonder how to get to that first million. And that's the simple answer is you just get there slowly. And, and so if we say in withdraw gill, there's another 16,000. Well, what did that come from? That 16,000 came from maple logs, those are vendor items, chicken eggs, vendor items, right? And so that is what's generating that money. Marcus, welcome to the workforce. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. Uh, anybody who hasn't hit subscribe, turn that bell on. Thank you for the thumbs up and all the comments down below. You guys are wonderful. Um, and so we'll go ahead and just drop that in the middle of this video. And then we say withdraw gill again, 32,000. And sometimes when I haven't checked this for like a couple days, that'll be 200,000. 300,000. I literally checked this last night and I'm going to pull almost another 100,000 gil off of four retainers. 
Uh, and so, well, there's a hundred thousand right there. Well, what generated that hundred? Well, we can go to view sale history and we can see, okay, that came from a venture, that came from a venture, that came from a venture, that came from a venture. Um, so the blue coral, I think I, I had that left over from a craft, but like literally half of the things that sold to make up that amount of money came from ventures or came from a vendor. It, it is really that easy. Now the question then becomes, I don't have access to a house. I've been patiently watching this video and I can't do this. And I don't want to love my crafters and I don't want to love my gatherers because there's definitely money making methods there. There's a thousand videos on that. Well, that's okay. Let's go ahead and go to Lemza and let's show you where you can get access to the very same items. And so if we go to Limza, I'm just gonna show you iron ore because I know that that's something that I can go through five or six stacks a day on my server if I'm really sitting on top of it. And um, and at five or six stacks a day at 5,000 a piece, you could make 25,000 gil a day in under a minute's work if you have access to a house. Uh, if you don't have access to a house, then we can take a look at how long this is gonna take. So keep in mind, I have the slowest load screens of anybody I know. So if yours are faster than this, these times are just all the better. Uh, this takes no effort, no leveling, really no risk, because you're risking that what, a 1500 gil investment never sells? I mean, it's gonna sell for something. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to the aft castle, because the first place you want to reliably know without going out to Gamerscape and looking stuff up is you want to, there goes the iron ore, 7,000 gil, 6,300, that just sold. So it's, it's already gone. This happens all the time. And is, and if you just do it when you first log on and do it when you log off, you make money hand over fist, just nickel and diming people, you know? And, and what this is, is this is this may be people who know there's vendors, but they've got 10 items to buy to make their craft. Iron ore is simply just one of it, and I'm going the wrong way. Um, iron ore is simply just one of it. And they would rather just pick up all 10 in one trip to the market board. So they'll pay that convenience fee. So if you're giving a billionaire a ride to the airport and they offer you a $2,000 tip, don't ask questions, just say thank you and just be thrilled that they feel like that was a fair deal and you feel like that was a fair deal and you both move on about your lives. So we run down here and there's two guild su suppliers. They're not just one uh, and they have different things. So the first one has, you know, kind of some of those lumbers and logs that I was telling you, the cloths and, and the, the uh, various leathers that I know sell well. And the other one here, we're gonna go ahead and buy another stack of iron ore just while we're here, 1700, thank you. And uh, look at the time on this video. We're at um, 12 minutes and 50 seconds at the raw recording. And so we will run down here. I don't remember how to get to the uh, to the Hawker's Alley in Limza because I don't ever buy anything in Limza. So we'll run down in Ethernet, and there might be a faster way for those of you watching and, and pulling your hair out. And we're going to go to Hawker's Alley. Not really in a hurry to click just relaxing. We're going to see if we can do this in under a minute. Um, and so I can see that I've, I've got about 20 seconds to get this listed. Uh, and so we're going to go back to the market board. All right, we're here. Here's your market board. There's your retainer access. Summoning bell. Let's just pick a retainer that has less items listed on it. Sell items in your inventory. All right, iron ore put up for sale. And uh, somebody just bought it all up to 118. Great, perfect. Uh, we'll undercut him at 110. And that's now gonna sell for 10,000 for the stack. Just like that. So somebody just bought all those up to drive up the cost of the, of the market, which is totally fine. And they can do that, good for them. You can also check things like the, the various suppliers here. Um, I find that a lot of times these different weapons don't sell for a profit. Uh, so these are like, you know, three to 7,000 a piece. Uh, for example, that hard silver hatchet that I told you at the beginning, 17,487. The reason that I don't go to that vendor, uh, and I got that from my botanist quest, is if we go to hard silver and put in an H, let parcel search do the rest, and we'll do the hatchet. You can see that this is going for 2,000 gil, and we can say, well, does it normally do that? No, it normally goes for even less. Uh, and so we know that that is not a good item to go buy at a vendor. You would be better off buying it off the market board where people are just dumping it. And uh, and that's probably what I'll end up doing, is I'll probably end up dumping it, or I'll end up decenting it, um, which is a whole nother subject. So 
that is honestly how you make your first 1 million gil, 2 million gil, that kind of how you start the fire. Is this going to make you into the bonfire that makes you 300 million? Not without an incredibly uh, intense amount of persistence. You're going to have to log on regularly to refresh your auctions. You're going to have to keep them totally stocked with all the best items available to you from vendors. And you're going to have to do it for days and days, weeks and weeks, months and months on end if you want to be hundreds of millions of gil. But most people don't. They just want that first couple million so that when I was on stream last night and I was short gear, you guys watched me go to the market board and just blow a couple million million gil and that's why is because I'm not worried about it a couple million is something that I can make it's something that I come up with I regularly fluctuate I'm just below five right now which means it's time for me to start trying to make money and then sometime around 10 million or so I'll get lazy and I'll stop trying to make money when I log in and I'll just focus on playing the game uh, now if you want to see how high you can get that little score down there because there isn't really any use for money in this game other than just having more then keep at it don't stop when you get to 10 million stop when you get to 100 stop when you get to 200 stop when you get to cap uh, it doesn't matter but this is a starting point that anybody has access to anybody can go to various different um, suppliers and say okay on my server for some reason this guy's gonna sell various baits and there's a bunch of fishers out there and they don't know where to buy bait all right well that's fine you can go onto the market board and you can say you know I can just go to bait and if you want to know where you can like if you want to know kind of what is selling go to like stone and go to copper ore okay copper ore selling for 15 and right there in the tooltip it sells shop sell site price of two so there's money to be made if we go down to iron ore there's our stack at 110 shop sell price 18 um, you know we know that that 10 for example that's shop sell price of two it's going for 30 um, and then you can see some of these have shop sell price none. So you can't compete in those markets without leveling a, a, a gatherer. And those are things that if you ever need to buy them, you know that you're getting kind of whatever the best deal is available on your server because this is gathering or doing something, ventures, whatever, you're going to have to actually go legitimately get it from a player that earned it one item at a time. Cloud Mica, for example, is a restricted shop selling price of 843, but it's going for 290. So I'd be better off buying it here, even if I have access to that restricted kind of shop status. Uh, and so that is really where you're at. I hope that makes sense. I hope I went over it and kind of said it enough different ways that that kind of absolutely makes you feel comfortable to try your own. You should absolutely be able to make a silly amount of money week over week by just logging in and checking that view sale history, refreshing this, the vendor items that you know sell for a lot on your server, and getting yourself a decent nest egg of enough money. I find that honestly, once I cross five to 10 million, I always have enough to buy the next set of crafted gear or any amount of repairs, teleports. If a new minion comes out, as long as it's not outrageous, I can probably pick it up. Um, I can pick up new emotes. I can buy anything that I want within reason. Now, if you're getting heavily into glamoring, if you're getting heavily into trying to collect all the minions, or you're trying to power level uh, like a crafter or a gatherer through like various kind of just buying up different leveling gear uh, for crafters, you're buying up the items to turn in for leaves, then you are talking about a lot more money, in which case you're going to need this to either be constantly coming in, or you're going to be, you know, you're going to need kind of some other way of making money that you start here but you move into that so i hope that makes sense to you my name's chris with work to game definitely welcome to all the new people here we've had a bunch lately and so guides are actually one of the things that brian and i put out fairly recently especially when the news kind of dies down we've just come out of a big news cycle going into shadowbringers the last fan fest and uh so it's time to get back to guides back to what we always do and uh help you guys just become a little more comfortable with the amount of time you have playing Final Fantasy and get a little more out of it. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.